Shabbat Shalom. Shalom Aleichem Alhamdulillah. Mashallah. God bless y'all. What's up? Happy Friday. What's up, y'all? We're sending myself something. Good morning, folks. What's up? Shout out to Shaka Khan. Ain't nobody. Shout out to everybody that's over 50, approaching 50, or 50 on the nose. Oh, so today, this um, this is me talking. This is just me. What I say um, is my therapy, right? I hope it's some of y'all therapy as well. Um, from the beginning, we all made a little different, right? We all made different, but we all made equal. You have to remember that. Um, it's paramount in you being who you're supposed to be and not being drafted into what somebody else might want you to be, right? Um, it would be the shit to be LeBron James, Jay-Z, uh, Brad Pitt, Denzel Washington, all that would be ideal, right, for you because you see their life as something desirable to have. And the powers that be, the public, the 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 controlling mechanism, and I'm quite sure all of us far enough along to see what's really going on. Um, you didn't have to want to see it, but what just happened, happened. You can't get away from that, right? So this controlling mechanism, the whole time is telling you that your, what you want to call a basic life is not good enough. Over a period of time, that becomes the unwritten, not real law, but status quo, court of popular opinion, public opinion. And that weight, the weight of popular and public opinion is extremely hard for some people to overcome. To some people, it lead to what they call depression. And what it is, is just a feeling of hopelessness and nowhere to turn and nobody to understand it. So, you think that there's nobody to understand what you're going through. So I understand exactly what y'all are saying. The, the escape for me, you know, the escape for me is my everyday workout with reconditioning in my mind with Torah. And y'all help me do that. I come here therapeutic because I have to relay what I feel, what I'm talking about. Then even more so, I thank y'all so much. Because some of y'all actually understand all the way up and down. You get it. You may have never heard it before. Um, because that's the way life is designed. If they just showing you this life, this life, this life, this, this life, this life. That's the way you're supposed to live. That's all you know. And then another way of life come. Um, that you see is like, wait a minute. I don't have to, I really don't have to participate in that or want to chase that. And some people, they've always known that. He may not have been open to all other gifts that the creator gave him, but some people never could be pulled off that path of simpleness. We call them nerds, geeks, whatever. And they find their own little piece of, for lack of better terms, heaven. And you have an outside world. And you laugh at him, right? One time, trading cards, Yu-Gi-Oh cards, Pokemon cards, all of that was real big. I laughed at those kids. These kids, um, same would be surf, skateboarders, surfboarders. Uh, anything that's not being pushed by what you consider the legal or the right media, right? Because... If you see it every day, it's on the radio. People are doing it. It's been done. It's pretty much got to be a wrap. That's got to be what it is. 
a lot of us, most of you that's listening to me now, mm, you never felt like that. You felt the resources part, which is the money. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to call that resources for, for the exorcism, right? Well, to detach you from it, to stop being possessed by that spirit. Now, munching myself and recently watching people RV, selling their homes and living on the road, and it's really attractive. It's really interesting, right? And it's really a lot of work, and. We were thinking seriously about doing it, and I understand why those people are doing it too. Like, if you have the resources to move about wherever you want to go at, be where you want to be at, when you want to be there, and you don't have to be a millionaire to live that life, to live a free lifestyle, to just take your elbow grease, how much you're willing to put into it, it can be done. And those people are really happy. And once they got through the initial foundational building stage and now they basically on cruise control pun intended and a life is a doable life and there's one that can be sustained is one that seemed like it's so peaceful and what i notice about people when they get financially secure or they have all the resources they need they just go somewhere and and be free right sorry y'all i just got a um a flash from months. She just sent me a message talking about Molly. Molly got into the cupcakes today. Like, I don't know what the hell is going on her, with her. I think she might be in a teenage change or whatever, but she never jumped up on calendars or anything like that before today. I come upstairs as a cupcake destroyed. It's half on the step, half in the kitchen. And from the culture that I come from, what, the one that I thought was a culture, I call it black culture. You don't like to let people one up you or I felt like I was violated with Molly. I know she a cat, but I'm sharing with y'all for real. So the rest of the cupcake that she didn't eat, it was still quite a bit. So I'm like, I velvet gloved. I went up to her. Hey, my mouth showed her the cupcake. Behind my back, I had my flip flop. Let Molly start licking on it take my flip-flop pop the cupcake smack in the face no a loud no so it wasn't to be mean what it was to do was send a shock to molly that that smell is equivalent to a fucking smack in your face with it so hopefully that sticks and mind you animals aren't like people but i guarantee you that molly remember that bad experience and this is how people has to change as well thanks much for leaving me where I needed to lead, always need to be led. I always say Munch is my muse, and she don't even know. She don't even know to the point that she gives me direction. And a lot of us don't have that person in our life. Um, and it doesn't have to be your completion, your significant other. Like, I come here, I know that a lot of y'all, outside of me talking to Munch every day, just killing her with this shit because... This is my life. You know, the word of the creator, Elijah, that's what has life in me. So I give my life back and I don't give up anything. You like you give your life to the creator, God. I actually enhanced my life like the RV drivers. I have access to everything I need without excess and access without excess. Y'all don't understand. And. A lot of y'all, even where you live at now, you're like, it's never enough money. It's because you honestly live in an excess. They they have given you this ideal of who and what you're supposed to be. What freed me up from that was looking at the other side, death. Like the cancer allowed me to see that all that shit outside of death is opinions. When I talk about an assimilated reality, I, I know because I disconnected from it. So... It'll be a lot of people. There's a lot of voices here, and there's a lot of people not doing well. And everybody had the same dream that they chasing, which they painted as the American dream. And it's no more than the founders or whoever, the people that that chartered the landmass. I'm being real with y'all now. You want to talk about an assimilation? I'm telling you about what it is. Maryland was chartered or founded by somebody with money. Came over here and brought whatever. You hear about the Louisiana Purchase and shit like that. They came over here assuming that they was buying land that our creator had already made. So 
no one is in jurisdiction to sell land. You know what I'm saying? So it's always been war, confiscation. Who could beat somebody on a landmass? This is a punishment of God. Listen, I'll, I'll use your state, whatever state you live in. All right, like this. I live in Maryland and the word of God is for, let's say Maryland is made up of 12 counties, 12 counties in a city, one of the cities, Baltimore. Okay. This is our province. All of us in Maryland, Maryland is the crab cake state. We come together under the rule of crab cake. All of us. That's what it's been for a little while. So then we start mixing and mingling with people from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. They close. Now you got a group of us that love cheesesteaks, but our laws are like, look, yo, we crab cake, we crab people. This is the word of our supreme God, crab cakes. But I don't see the harm in eating Philly cheesesteaks, right? They our neighbors. They got people like us. Okay, so now half of us are like, fuck that. We like the cheesesteaks better than the crab cakes. And... It's an infiltration of crab cake, cheese cake. Now you got a Philly cheese crab cake. You know what I'm saying? Steaks up. That's an amalgamation, but everybody getting a taste that they like. Syncretism. So now, Philadelphia, who never took the way of the crab cakes, or even if Philadelphia took the way of the crab cakes, they don't have any rules about anything in Philadelphia or Pennsylvania, mind you. Pennsylvania can do what they want, come when they want. Anybody can fight in their army. Like, it's a place, a cesspool. So you can do whatever the fuck you want to do. There's no rules and regulations. They all on one accord. Even though the accord is not all crab cakes, the accord is not all cheese steaks, it's all collectively together. So the crab cake guys fighting for the cheese steak guy, as well as the cheese steak guys fighting for the crab cake guy. Over here, we got one nation now. Only one city left in Maryland is keeping the absolute crab cake law. So these people saying, fuck them. We with Philadelphia. We with, we with Pennsylvania. But when Pennsylvania come, they don't give a fuck that <laughs> you eating crab cakes and cheese steaks. They're fighting against Maryland. So you got a united Philadelphia coming and you thought that you was with them. No, sir, you with them now. Now you're their slaves because they smashing down on Maryland. One place, Baltimore, can't beat a whole goddamn state, which is Pennsylvania. So now this is the punishment because the people that we put in charge here in Maryland was in cahoots with the people in Pennsylvania. So now, now... You got a weaker nation trying to fight against a giant. There's no way. It's no fucking way. So out of your fetishes, you weaken your nation. And just because they put something in effect, it's been going on for so many years, it don't mean that that's the foundation of foundationally right. Your ancestors have agreed with the slavery, you know, um, Way before you and I got here, they had openly, openly said it's okay to practice and worship like these other countries. So the creator, our God, always calls himself a Lord of hosts, a Lord of hosts. All punishment is distributed with the hand of war or pestilence. You know what I'm saying? The famine part, you see some nations can't recover from it. All these years, you still have third world nations. There's no fucking way. So something something can't be correct, y'all. You dig it? And then we're talking about authority again. Y'all give authority and you give praise. Where is money at? Where is material at? And that's definitely not a tenet of, of character or morality in the scripts of the creator because the whole book if you're ready to take it in how you're supposed to organically, stop being so fucking spaced out, looking for somebody to lead you when you just relax, take a deep breath, and want to know what's right. Dig into the book, sip some wine, alter your mind state because you have 
You have a governor on you. A governor is... When I worked for FedEx, the trucks had a governor. They showed 160 miles on the speedometer, but they had put a mechanism on these trucks that they couldn't go any faster than 55 or 60 miles an hour. That was it. You have governors on your brain from birth, and your parents are the implanters. They're the ones that indoctrinate you. This whole system, speaking on indoctrination, starting with your school, and your school was put in effect by religious leaders here in the United States of America, that's where the literacy start. It was the religious groups that started uh, reading and writing in the basement of the churches or Sunday schools. That's where you learn to read and write. The educational system is arbitrary. It's, it's what they thought they should have taught from old England to here. And they thought that everybody needed to be educated, read and write. And I understand that. People should have been reading and writing arithmetic math. That's it. Because what Thomas Jefferson and these guys thought was important obviously is outdated and not important right now. The only thing we need to know about those motherfuckers is the laws that they put down to constitute the United States. These states united as one unit under the word of our creator, God, right? To all my Muslims, to all the Islamic people, faith around the world, um, I identify with Islam, right? I don't identify with your language or your cultures or your customs because I don't speak that, but it's one God. And I hope Muslims, Islam, don't try to play the same role as the fake ass Hebrews and say you own the creator because he owns us. He created us. So no matter what language you speak and his word is there for us. So anybody that's feeling like you own something, you need to watch your tone, right? Because the creator created all of us. There's different dialects, different tones, different tongues that we speak in. I don't believe in the Tower of Babel. There's no, no need for me to believe in that as a man. This is something that your ancestors, your mom, your grandmother, whoever, couldn't tear themselves away from. But the people that you're dealing with are out of their minds. And I'm not trying to disrespect your elders or whatever, but it's got to be said. I keep talking about how old I am, right? How young I am not. I got 50 plus years on this landmass, y'all. Listen to me. You do the true math on slavery. You do the true the true period on slavery. 1619 is when the first servants landed here, not enslaved, landed here. 20 of them that were already servants from whatever. Slavery had been going on as a result of war. The scripts say it, you see it. Slavery is a part of society. Slavery will and well, not will always have to be, but as a result of war, you become subject to those nations. You think that all these places that the United States of America has bases at, the people just said, come on in. Y'all welcome to have a base. When we kick these people ass and in war, we never left. That's called occupation. Historically, they set up garrisons and places where they could reach out and chin check whoever they was occupying. You hear these fake ass stories about Jesus, the Roman centurions, all that shit is Greek and Roman and it's conception, all those stories. But they tell a little bit of truth about how they had bullshit governors set up these alliances where the powers that be was just a fist away from putting you on your ass. Uh, historically, right? This situation that we live in and now it echoes times of anti uh, antiquity. You have a fake society set up off a of fake God, fake judgment system, and not to lose foot in um, Islam, which is true in spirituality. Muslims or whatever that shit was, was created to battle Christianity. And it was pure. Islam didn't need to do anything. They didn't need to have a culture. They just needed to do what the creator said. So while I'm not dishonoring Islam, pure Islam, the religion I am. I don't believe in any man. I can't. Your ancestors were liars. You know, they lied to keep up. They lied to be in charge. They was not men that was honorable. There's no way they was. And this isn't my truth. This is just truth, period. You wouldn't be sitting in the situation that you are today if our ancestors was honorable and could follow the word as it was written. Not to add, not to subtract, not to say we the chosen people or any of that shit or 
not to seek sympathy for any punishment that came your way from the creator. I'm not talking shit. Something that I, else that I walked in, the life that I lived, the fucked up way that I lived, and the creator made sure that I knew that that was all me. You know, that was me versus the cancer. Not y'all, not your ancestors. And I don't have anything but truth to say at this point. It's not about the money. If you don't take it in, you don't take it in. And you the one that's the receiver of those lumps, those bruises. And then you pretend that you're a victim because you don't even know why this would happen to a nice person like you. You don't use drugs, you blah, blah, blah. All these things, these accolades that you check yourself out by. Your check mechanisms aren't a lost mechanism. And you can be proud. You can not put an umbrella up in a house. All these things that your ancestors passed down to you, right? All these traditions. Let me ask y'all this in all actuality because I got off the point. Uh, first slaves here. 1620, 1619, all right? Um, 1620, 1619, I'm sorry, 1619, first slaves arrive in Virginia, service, arrive, not enslaved, 1865, Lincoln frees the slaves, 1865. So that's 156 years ago. Lincoln freed the slaves. 156 years ago. Lincoln freed the slaves. Y'all following me? I'm 54 years old. So minus what? That's 102 years has got to be accounted for. My grandmother, my grandmother, Marie J. Cooper, she will be in her hundreds, right? She's 100 years old. She would be 100. At least that. So you got 56, 54 of my years. And my grandmother's 100. My grandmother never mentioned slavery to me. Her father was alive. We called him Papa. I guess he passed when I was about five. I used to sit on the front porch with him in my underwear on Oakley Avenue. I know he would have knew something about slavery. Fuck, he looked like a sharecropper. Real dark, shaven face, black ass. Crip keeper looking mortician. No disrespect, but that's what he looked like to me as a child. He would have been around at that time. We didn't need any books. Most blacks couldn't read or write, but what they could do was talk. Oral tradition. We've never gotten the word that we were slaves in my family. You know, just with that math, and I don't need anybody's authority to be able to do that math. That's firsthand. I don't need anybody's paperwork. That could be destroyed and say, oh, it's not written down. It don't exist. The only thing you need written down is a contract. The rest of that shit is up in the air. I follow the word of God. That's the one thing y'all debate the most. I openly believe in Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, and shit like that. Slave trade, you can never prove. A Holocaust that you wasn't there for. If I put these points up in the air, I'm I'm a heretic or I'm, I'm sacrilegious. All these shits. That y'all want me to believe emotional that you'll never be able to prove to me. I'm going to stand on God, right? Because everything I stood on per the creator has actually manifested itself in my life. And I didn't hold back, didn't keep any secrets, any of the struggles, the battles that I went through. I actually shared them. People backed down. They, they were skeptical about a whole bunch of stuff because they couldn't see how I saw it. Y'all can't hoop like LeBron hoop or box like Floyd box. But since I'm not making millions of dollars for what my gift is, it can't be, right? That's your own self-hate. You know, you're not tapped into your creator. You're still bowing down to people with more money, people who you think physically are more appealing, uh, more material. And that's a sad fucking existence because I'm not here to be any of these people. 
I don't want to be any of those people. I'm out of the curse. I'm out of the enchantment. I'm walking and not my truth. If y'all were brave enough, and this isn't a diss, if you were brave enough to understand your hand directly is in the fuckery that's in your life, you could start digging out of that. You know, I, I wasn't here. I didn't just end up here. You know, this shit is struggle. You know, it's it's day-to-day -day struggle. I'm going through therapy right now. I'm coming in here sharing truth with people that I hope hear it for what it is and can implement it in their life. It don't cost anything. It, it It's some work, but it don't cost you shit. It's like RVing. It's less expensive, but it's more work. If you lazy, then you want the convenience of having somebody else tell you what to do, tell you how to be, tell you what to eat. You go right ahead. You give them control of your resources, which are your rights given to you by the creator because you want other novels. You want a pill. You want something to drink. You don't want to put the work in yourself. Y'all see what I do with those, those calisthenic bars. And it ain't in the competition with another fucking man on the planet. It's for everything that the creator, the gave, what the creator gave me to function and operate at the capacity he wanted it to function and operate at. Are y'all doing that? Your mental capacity. Do you push up, sit up, squats? Your brains. Every day. Well, I do. To the point of, listen. Um, I wanted to talk about the education system and why y'all think the way y'all think. And why is it that, okay, I'm a man. Why is it that it's harder for you to believe me as a man than some other man because they said he's a college professor or whatever these titles are? Like, why would he have a title? What's that title for? Is this title to help you? The title that he had, did he pay for the title? Did you just see him over a period of time and you decided as people that he was this? Or did an organization say, this guy is the guy that you should listen to. This is your expert. Well, I ever think about that? I know it's impossible to, for anybody to have a mind that free and actually think, who is this person? And then past thinking it, start to implement, fuck this person. He don't know more than me. Have, it, have any of you ever looked at your physician, your doctor, looked at their, their body, their shape, and you you don't feel the need to question what they look like and talking about health? That's money involved. You pay, He paid for that title. He took tests for that shit, but in actuality, he not living it. It's like your parents smoking a cigarette telling you not to smoke. I don't give a fuck what you say. I see what you do. That's talking about God and then not keeping a word. It's the same stuff. You know what I mean? So, listen. I'm going to say this, then I'm going to get off here. Because Munch just asked me, was I hungry? And I am. So, this is this is um about your education system. And the origin of it. And, and why it should be gone. And why we don't need it. The idea of passing children knowledge is nothing new. And can date back to the first humans on earth. Long before schools, parents, and elders would pass down their knowledge to their children. This was typically done one-on-one -on -one as opposed to teaching a group of children. The knowledge passed down typically consisted of hunting skills, self-defense tactics, responsibilities that needed to be done, and even responsibilities that had to be done for the group that they belonged to. After a while, the idea of placing a group of people to teach them those skills came up. By doing that, a group of students could learn the skills and knowledge together, which saved time and allowed the students to learn. It wasn't about what they talked about. It was about teaching us what was prevalent in our society, right? Y'all, we right at 30 minutes. I'm going to get off here. I'll, I will be back because Munch going to throw down and I'm hungry. So it's about the authority, who you give it to. And I'm here every day. And I'm going to use myself because I'm the only example that I know. Um, what do I ask y'all for? What is it? Why do I come here? What do I want? Am I trying? Like, you have to dig into this. Like, what would be my purpose versus what else you're connected to? I don't have a truth. It's nothing for me to ask y'all for. What I do know is it's going to be a repair period because throughout our lives, we've been constantly moving in the wrong direction. You turn your truck around, you're going to have to go across ground that you covered going in the wrong direction. And it's not 
it's not a good thing walking past the shit or even thinking that you got to go back. So you need other people with the same spirituality or mind state, mindset such as yourself. As yourself. So when I tell y'all I appreciate y'all, that's where it come from. And yes, much. And you have to stay charged up. You know, this is my therapy. I come here every day to charge up from Jarrell, OGP, Dr. Chu, my little brother, Brennan, Eric Harper, my man over at the love brand, Pooski the Barber, Sister Jackie Crystal, sis, look, we all here together and it's a facade, you know what I'm saying? We have some, some situations that we got to undo and it's uncomfortable while he's getting undone, but it's in moving in the right direction. And we do have a tribe, a spiritual tribe of people. Maybe y'all not as vocal as I am. Maybe I'm not as artistic as y'all are, but we all here for the same purpose. The spirituality is it. The religion is not. That's not it. You know, I don't speak Aramaic. I don't speak Hebrew. I don't feel like I need the front. When I say a couple of the sayings, mashallah, it's because... I like to say that, you know, it's a greeting. It's, it's me saying buenos dias in Spanish, good morning or whatever. I like it, you know what I'm saying? So that's it. It's not about anything other than that. And like I say, names, Ja, Allah, Yah, you know I'm talking about the supreme power, right? And the order of that power. And this is how I cut out all the bullshit about this person said that, Josephus said this. I don't give one fuck and don't have to. Josephus not bigger than me. He not. He not bigger than you. He not here, is he? Who's still here that you read about? You understand that? If they die, they're fallible. And it's up to you to find out if they are or not. And you have a blueprint mechanism if you don't go to the left or to the right. So I'll be back a little bit after I get this grub in my system, y'all. Peace.